Hi everybody, Nigel here, and hello to all our carey kids. I hope you're keeping well, and that you're looking forward to what we're going to see in God's Word. Look at these pictures. Do you know what these things are, and what they're used for? Well, these are called crutches. And they're often used by people who may have broken a leg or sprained an ankle. It helps to support them as they try to walk. Here is a walking frame. Now you'll often see older people using these who've become frail and they need something to hold on to as they walk around, often very slowly. This is a wheelchair. Now you could see an adult or a child in one of these. And people who use these often cannot walk at all. Now some people can move themselves around in them, but if that's not possible, someone can push them where they need to go. Well, the man in our Bible story today, he couldn't walk at all. And he didn't have any of these things to help him. Our story comes from the book of Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 16. Now, by this time, Jesus had gone to his Father in heaven and instructed the disciples to spread the good news of salvation to the people and also given them power to perform miracles. For this disabled man in our story, each day was the same. He wasn't able to get a job and he had no money, which meant that he had to beg. Maybe you've seen people on the streets holding out their hands and asking for money. Well, this is what this man did every day, just in the hope that someone might be able to help him out. The man had some friends who would carry him to the entrance of the temple, which is a bit like a church where people would go and worship and pray to God. Coming towards the gate were two of Jesus' disciples, Peter and John. And as usual, the man cried out, Please give me some money! I'm hungry and I don't have anything to eat! Peter and John stopped and said, Look at us! Now do you think the man was excited? Maybe he will get some money. So he, he looked up at them. But then Peter said, we don't have any money. Well, how do you think the man felt now? I imagine he was really disappointed and ready to move on to someone else who could help. But wait, that wasn't the end of it. Peter then spoke to the man and said, we're going to give you something we do have. I imagine the man became a little more hopeful at this point, don't you? But whatever he expected, it wouldn't have been what happened next. Peter then spoke to the man and said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Peter took the man's hand, gently pulled. The Bible tells us that the man jumped to his feet. The man's feet and ankles became strong and he was able to stand by himself with no more help from anybody. The man knew it was the power of God through Peter who had healed him. He then walked and jumped and then immediately praised God for healing him. Wow, what an amazing miracle. Of course, this very quickly drew a crowd as this man would have been really well known to them. There was wonder and amazement with what had happened. Remember, the man now believed in Jesus and Peter saw this as an opportunity to tell all these people about the one who had healed him. Peter said to them, 
It was God's power that healed this man. He is the same God your families have worshipped for many years. Remember, God's Son, Jesus, lived among you. You turned away from him and had him killed. But God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. This man has been healed because he believed that the Lord Jesus Christ could help him. Strong words. How did the people react? Were they offended? Well, some of them probably. But it's not until we get to the next chapter, chapter 4, that we read, many who heard the message believed. In fact, thousands of people came to believe in Jesus because of what they'd seen and heard. Now that's worth a double well. Now, even though Jesus was in heaven, he was still able to use his disciples with powerful words and actions. We really don't see miracles like that today. But we have been given doctors and nurses and surgeons and all sorts of medicines to help people who struggle with certain disabilities. And that is something to really thank God for. The purpose of the miracles was to point people to Jesus, who can heal them of their greatest need. The need to be right with God, have their sins forgiven and live the rest of their lives for him, with the guarantee of heaven at the end. If you're trusting in Jesus, he can use your words when you share the good news of Jesus with other people. God's word has great power to save. If you don't know Jesus as your saviour, why not be like the man in our story who realised Jesus could save him and responded by putting his trust in him immediately? Well, you can do that today. And then you'll be able to praise God with great joy and happiness just like the man. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening and have a great day. Bye.